Over the summer, you might have seen our video on things you can copy off the pros to make yourself faster and more comfortable on the bike. The downside to quite a lot of these components and tricks is that it not only took quite a lot of time to perfect, but also a lot of money. If only there was a cheap way of making yourself faster. Free speed, if you like. Well, today we're answering the age old question of why literally all the pros shave their legs and how much faster, if any, it could make you. To help us out, we've drafted an aero guru and founder of aero coach, Xavier Disley, who spent countless hours answering these very questions in a wind tunnel. Shaving legs is, is faster, right? It's, it's more aerodynamic. Um, I know that the, the reasons that people come up with for things like what's oh, better for massage and stuff. I mean, from my perspective, it's more aero and that's, that's really what I'm more concerned about. So if you, if you look at a rider from the front and you look at the legs, which are in effectively free airflow, um, they're not, you know, they're not behind anything. They're not at the back of the bike or anything. Um, your legs are much wider than the down tube of the bike. And if we said to you that um, you were going to cover the down tube of your bike in a layer of hair, um, everyone would be like, right, well, that's going to be far less aero. I'm not going to buy a, bike, a hairy bike. Um, so if you take the surface area and the frontal area of the, uh, of the down tube of the bike and you multiply that up by six, seven times or something, um, that's what your legs are. Uh, and so, yes, getting rid of the hair on your legs is worth you know, it's, it's more than just putting aero socks on, um, probably not as much as a jersey for most people, but at 30k an hour, you're saving, uh, it's not fractions of a watt, it's, it's like, it's watts, you know, you're saving so three, five, six watts or so, and then that gets increased the, the faster you go. Um, so always worth doing if you can, if you can get away with it, um, and you don't find it too, um, too onerous. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a, and that's definitely free, you know, cost of a cheap disposable razor and you're sorted yeah now a question that often plays on my mind is if you're if shaving your legs is quicker then why not your arms now i i know some very keen racers definitely do shave their arms i don't um i found it a bit uncomfortable but yeah it will it make you faster let's think about it in two different scenarios so if we have a time trial scenario um you can get away with in nearly all situations covering your arms with a long sleeve skin suit um, and in most cases um, the fabrics that you can choose for your suit that cover your forearm will um, be faster than bare skin there are some instances where it doesn't really matter for some riders which depends a little bit on the angle of your forearm um, and in those cases um, some riders prefer to have exposed arms because it's better for cooling for example um, so sometimes it will it, it matters and sometimes it doesn't um, if you've shaved your arms. Um, on a road bike, if you have really hairy arms, then um, you're often not wearing a long sleeve jersey and it, it'll, be a, it'll be a good idea. Um, obviously, the more your arm is kind of presented to the wind, so the kind of the more vertical your arm is, if you're in the drops or if you're on the holding the hoods with your arms straight, um, that's going to be a little bit different than if you have a breakaway position where you have your forearm parallel to the ground, for example. Um, Yes, it is. It is a bit weird to shave your arms. Um, I've done it um, for time trials before um, and yeah, it is a bit uncomfortable um, and does, doesn't feel as normal as shaving your legs because you don't do it all the time. Um, but uh, I'd, I'd say for most people, probably don't worry about it too much. But, but shaving your legs is, is the performance benefit that um, I think most people can get behind. Now, I just want to touch on that, that material is faster than bare skin. Is that right? Is that what you just said? Most of the time, in most situations, yes, because you can tune the material for the application that's being used for. There are some instances where having a slightly rougher surface is good, and so you can either use skin for that purpose or you can use a slightly rougher material. But in general, because your skin is your skin, right, you can't really change it. Um, uh, in fact, there was a situation some years ago where a team was putting um, like a gel paste on their legs um, to change the properties of the skin to make it more aero that got banned by the UCI. Um, but the, uh, the ability to change your fabric, um, for the specific, um, airspeed requirements is overall better than just having bare skin. Um, but there are some scenarios where bare skin is, is fine. Um, you just have to know what those are. It's just crazy. It's baffled me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've obviously seen a lot of aero developments. Aero is a, of a buzzword in cycling right now 
what do you think the most exciting developments to come are? Can can materials get quicker? Can bikes get quicker? I think that there's, um, because most of the development in the cycling industry is focused around um, working within the UCI's regulations and framework, most of the advances that we'll see will come when the regulations are changed or relaxed or, or modified in some way. Obviously, if it, from, from a two-wheeled sport point of view, if we want to go faster, we all ride fared recumbents, right? That's that's the, the kind of like no holds barred scenario. We're not doing that because there's a, a governing body which um, has sway over what the larger manufacturers do. And so um, it, there will be advancements in the technology and the speed people can go because the rules are ever evolving. Um and I think what people are seeing more and more these days is, is the integration of as many components and, um, and accessories as possible. So like we were saying before about the road suit, how having an integrated jersey and bib shorts um, makes, them, it makes it that setup nearly as fast as a skin suit, to be honest. Whereas in previous years, you'd have the bibs and jersey, you'd have a, uh, like a, a hemline at the end of the bibs, and they would just be a little bit slower than having everything integrated. Um, on the bike, you're seeing things like wheels and frames being designed together. We're seeing frames that are designed to interact with the rider a little bit more as well. Um, so I think the, the more integrated all the systems become, the faster things will get. And then also when regulations are changed with the UCI, which has happened a little bit recently with um, the ability to deepen tubes and things like that, um, then that allows for a next an, another step uh, of advancement in technology. So there's obviously lots of technology that you can you could apply to a two-wheel bicycle, um, the example of the Fed recumbent, um, but whether or not we can get to use them <laughs> depends a little bit on what the UCI does. Now, for most people, the UCI, it's not important to them. You know, your club ride is not a UCI-regulated race, um, but the equipment that you're using is very much, um, you know, based these have been have, have been doing because manufacturers won't be able to market things unless it can be used in the Tour de France and, and stuff like that quite as easily. Um, so um, so yeah, it, things will be ever evolving purely purely for that reason. So there you go. Yes, shaving your legs really will save you a fair few watts. It's not just for the post race massages that the pros get. Let us know whether you're prepared to shave it off in the name of speed in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up if you like this kind of content and subscribe to the channel for more content on all things bikes. We'll see you next time.